Hello, hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Go For Your Life. Now, this week is a little special. So I decided to repeat an episode of Powerhouse of a Woman, Fiona Oaks, who is a world champion, four times world champion vegan runner. She actually holds four world records. Um, she's just incredible. And on top of that, she also runs her own sanctuary, Tower Hill Stables, um, in which she's actually looking after over 500 animals or something like that. And whenever you support Fiona, you support the animals. That's what I love about her so much. So this is episode 41 and I just turned 41. Hmm, interesting how that works. It just worked out perfectly that way. And as I said, I want to repeat Fiona's uh, episode also. And this is really cool. We're doing a promotion. So if you go to our Instagram, go for your life now, go to Instagram and have a check because you can actually win a free signed by Fiona herself copy of her new book called Running for Good. So it's also a movie, the movie that stars Fiona. The movie is made by our dear friend Keegan who also made Cowspiracy, What the Health. He's also an absolute legend. He made that movie and now Fiona also wrote the book. And when I saw the book um, on her Instagram, I was like, oh my God, there's now also a book. Wah! So um, as uh, the podcast, we bought a few copies and we really want to give it to someone who really, really wants it, loves it, and who's also a supporter of us and will also be a supporter of Fiona. So please go check out our Instagram and enjoy this episode. So it's, like I said, it's an older episode, but I thought it was really, really nice to uh, repeat it because Fiona is so amazing. She just released this book. Go check out her book. Go check out what you can do to win this book and go support Fiona. You can find her as oaks.fiona on Instagram or you find her beautiful sanctuary, Tower Hill Stables. So go check it out. Enjoy this episode. And um, you know the drill. Be good to yourself. Be good to others. Especially the animals. Be good to Fiona. Be good to Fiona now. You do it. You do it. Bye-bye. Life. It's an amazing podcast and it is presented and hosted by myself, Caro, and my sweet dog, Sparky. Give it up for him. I hope you're ready. Enjoy. Yes, dear people, welcome back to a new episode of Go For Your Life. And today I have Fiona Oaks uh, with me uh, all the way from England, uh, Lisbon and England connection. Um, if you don't know Fiona, uh, I don't know what you're doing with your life. I'm a huge fan. Um, I've seen her in Running for Good, an amazing movie from Keegan, who was uh, in our podcast a few weeks ago. And now I'm going to chat a little bit with her today. Welcome, Fiona. Hi. Lovely Yay. to be with you. Yeah, I'm so happy you're here with me as well. Um, so like I said, uh, when we were just chatting, I have so many questions because, you know, you do so many things. But um, I'll just start with the beginning, um, because I saw you in Running for Good, uh, a movie mm. made by Keegan. Um, and we follow you in this uh, Sahara marathon, basically, right? Like a, a six-day marathon in the, in the desert. Yeah. Uh, and it's, is it, it's like 251 kilometers? The, yeah, the it's round about. It's, 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 the race is always over 250k. It's, it's between 250 and 260k, yeah. Mm -hmm. And do you want, because it's, it's going to be happening again in, in April this year, right? Like, are you going to do it again? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Are you going to do that again, all that yeah, we I'm saw? Do it again. To be honest with you, what <laughs> Keegan didn't mention in the film is that that was the third time I'd done it. Wow. Yeah. And each time has been a new adventure. <laughs> and, um, yeah. Uh, in 2012, um, I was just coming off my road running career. Um, my running is all about promoting veganism. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I kind of thought I'd done all I could with road running. Yeah. So um, somebody suggested to me, um, if you want to show how strong and fit and healthy a vegan person can be, <laughs> do Marathon the Starble. And yeah. I'm kind of like, that sounds like a really good idea, you know, it did in 2011 when I kind of was entering it, but not in 2012 when I actually was 
coming to do it. Wow. Um, I am um, the week before the race, I fractured two toes. Wow. So I was now faced with going out to do this tubby foot race on the planet with two fractured toes, <laughs> uh, which I did. I became the first vegan woman to complete it. Wow. Um, but I went through hell out there. I mean, on the long stage, which was about 85K that year, you could actually see the bone sticking out my little toe. <laughs> Um, and so, I mean, I was in a real state, but I got through it. I got through it midfield. Mm -hmm. And, um, because I'd rescued a woman, um, who was really struggling that year, she actually pulled out. Yeah. They said, if you want to come back next year without broken toes, we'd welcome you in the race. <laughs> um, so I kind of thought, yeah, because there is a massive waiting list for people to actually go out there and do this. Mm -hmm. Um, I thought, yeah, I'll go for it. Um, but, um, in the meantime, one of my um, my other friends, and I, I'm always a bit reluctant to say friends because if people think fr your friends suggest you do this kind of thing, what do your enemies tell you to do? Um, but they said, totally. um, they said um, you know, why don't you do the polar races? You know, I mean, um, mm. and I, well, what are they? And it's um, like a marathon at the North Pole and in Antarctica. And bearing in mind that the motive behind my running is to promote veganism all the time, yeah. I kind of thought, you know... This has got to be definitive proof that as a vegan, you can't, you're not going to walk around looking like you've been dug up or you can just about get off the ski. <laughs> if you can go to the North Pole and run a marathon, mm -hmm. um, that's got to be definitive proof that you can do anything yeah. as a, a long, long term vegan. So um, I looked into doing the, the North Pole marathon and it was too expensive, basically. Mm -hmm. And so um, I went back to Plan B of doing the Marathon de Sable again, but. Um, in the meantime, the race organiser of the North Pole offered me a place in the race. And it, it's absolutely at the same time as the um, uh, Sahara race. Mm -hmm. So I, I grabbed the opportunity of going to the North Pole. Um, I didn't just uh, complete it. I won it. I broke a world record up there. It's the fastest woman to ever ever run a <laughs> marathon there. And pretty much one of the fastest people. Podium wow. with the men. Yeah. And that kind of put me out, you know, to go and like do the world record, mm. um, but I, which I did in 2013. Um, and I went back to Marathon de Sable in 2014 mm -hmm. and I was going really, really well in the race, um, like really top placed. And um, after the second day, one of my tent mates was in real trouble, a guy called Mike Julien. Mm. He'd, um, he got um, leukemia. Oh, he was taking wow. chemotherapy. And um, he said he was going to have to pull out. He just could not mm -hmm. stand it any longer. And he was so frightened of the prospect of the long stage, which was 100K. Mm -hmm. um, he said, I'm never going to get through it. I'm never going to get through it on my own. And then I kind of stepped in and said, well, if you're still in the race tomorrow and you definitely want to do the long stage mm -hmm. um, and no one else will help you, I will. I'll stay with you and yeah. um, mentor you around it. I thought someone else might step in after I'd offered that because I was in fifth place overall. Mm -hmm. uh, but no one did. And mm. um, Mike came back to the tent after, well, he came back to the finish line. It took me about four hours that day stage and it took him about 12. Mm -hmm. And he just threw himself into my arms and said, does oh. your offer still stand for tomorrow? Wow. So I couldn't very well say, well, no, I've changed my mind now. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, man. No, like, yeah. whatever, man. And so um, <laughs> I basically had to throw my race away to... Um, to get him round, but I knew what it was like. He was doing yeah. it for a reason. He wanted to finish MDS. He wanted to prove to others that mm -hmm. you know cancer does not have to define you. And exactly. I wanted him to help. That it's about yeah. for me. It's about compassion over competition. Whether yeah. that compassion is extended to another competitor or to the animals that you're running for, that's mm -hmm. always more important for me. Mm -hmm. So um, that's the two times previous that I'd done MDS. And yeah. then um, when Keegan filmed, he said, you know, I really wanted, I really want to film you doing something special. And I thought, well, I can't go back to the North Pole. I can't do world <laughs> records again. Um, yeah. What about MDS? Because I knew that they got the logistics to get him where he needed to be to get the good shots. So mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. he convinced me to go back and do it again. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Quite yeah, frankly, yeah. Um, why I'm going back this time is just because I'm completely crazy. I think. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm totally. Gonna go and try and run it for myself this time. Wow, that was really yeah. Because it is really, and um, I think the documentary is so. I love it so much because it's such an amazing view on like on, on everything, you know, on, on yeah. you and your, you know, of course, also you work for the sanctuary, but also like how insane you are that you, that you do some of that. <laughs> and especially for me, because I have to tell you, Fiona, I'm going to tell you a secret. I hate running so yeah, much. Yeah, so do I. Like, I, I just hate it. And it's just yeah. unbelievable how you... Yeah. 
how you, you I mean, you it is, it's kind of, I, I joke with people that say, you know, I consider myself blessed that I've got a body that allows me to run just yeah. about, kind of yeah. limp. But um, I, um, I, I, I just wonder who those people are that get up in the morning and think, hey, great, I can go yes. running. <laughs> you know, like, you know, you can, I am that person who is like making every excuse under the book, you know, to actually not go out. And then I realise I'm just so short on time, it's now or never, and I've got to go out. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but I'm very lucky that I'm, I'm quite, I I'm motiv- I'm, I'm, I can motivate myself to keep doing it. I, I don't run in a group. I don't have a club. I don't have a trainer or anything like that. Mm. I, I, I'm very lucky that I can self-motivate. I'm very self-driven. Yeah, yeah, I went yeah. vegan when I was six yeah. because it was self-inspired. That's yeah. what I want to do and I'm going to do it. Mm. And nobody's going to change my mind. So exactly. I apply that to whatever I do, whether it be the sanctuary or... Yeah, if I'm, you know, firefighter or whatever, I I just decide that that's what I'm going to do. That's when what I you're going to do. do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because how many? Um, because you use you you hold a few records, right? Like a few world records. Like how many yeah. do? How many? How four. many do you? Okay, four, 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 four together. Wow, mm. that's yeah. amazing. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> that's... yeah, that's what I thought. I mean, how? I mean, I I mean, when Keegan actually sh- showed me footage of running for good. Um, well, he kept trying to show me footage of it, but who <laughs> wants to watch themselves on screen? Not me. So um, I was coming out to um, America to do a conference uh, with Switch for Good. Hmm. And uh, Keegan said, let's let's premiere the film. Hmm. I get which role there to the cinema and we premiere the film. And I was like, mm, you know, yeah. I'm not sure about it. <laughs> and um, I arrived in the cinema and Rich came over to me and said, oh, you must be really proud of the film. It's wonderful, isn't it? I said, I don't know. I haven't watched it yet. Yeah. And he looked at me and was like, oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, I haven't watched it yet. And yeah. I was going to be at the back of the cinema kind of, kind of, you know, sort of dropping something on the floor when the credits yeah. started at the beginning and then like popping up. I found it. Oh, yeah. damn, I've missed yeah, the film. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, but now he yeah. dragged me to the front of the cinema and I'm kind of sitting next to Rich Roll and, in this yeah. crowded cinema watching myself. And I thought, oh, this is just horrendous, you know. Yeah. But, and yeah. I thought, calm down, woman. It can't be all bad. You're in the Sahara Desert. You've got the gear on. You mm-hmm. it can't be all that bad. Mm-hmm. And then I saw myself hobbling out of the kind of sand, like, you know, a cross between <laughs> Quasimodo and I mean, a li- a li- a li- limping along like the hundred pack of Notre Dame. And I thought, oh, oh, even in that setting, you look pretty awful and um, but, yeah I mean uh, it's not about what you look like it's what mm-hmm. I do and, exactly uh, I found a way to run even though I've got my disability I found yeah because you have it. like that was another thing that I wanted to say when you just said like you just go do it because you do you run despite you you lost your kneecap right yeah, that, yeah 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 and so um, and, and so that's uh is that hard like uh yeah running? i mean you... i was told when i had the surgeries i had a lot of surgeries in my teenage years nothing to do with being vegan it was a problem that i got an orthopedic problem with both my knees lost my right kneecap and they told me that you won't be able to walk properly um, let alone run i was very athletic as a t- yeah. you know junior and a teenager um so people say well why did you take to marathon running um I didn't particularly want to marathon run. I wanted to promote veganism. And Mm -hmm. as a woman in sport, even now, even in the 21st century, um, you ask for the names, the women in sport, there are very few that are going to crop up that people in the street are going to mention. But at the time in the UK, uh, marathon running was getting a lot of attention because Paula Radcliffe was doing well in the Ah, event. mm -hmm. And so it got all the hashtags, so to speak. You know, this is a really brutal event. It's the toughest event in the athletics calendar. You know, it's Mm. got all those things attributed to it. So I kind of thought, well, if I can just compete in and hopefully complete a marathon, that's got to be definitive proof that you can do anything as a vegan. Mm -hmm. That's Mm -hmm. the only reason I took to running. I thought, slight problem. I was told I would never be able to run. (laughs) But, you know, hey, I've never really tried. Yeah, and um, I I still consider that I can't run. I I just kind of shuffle along or hop along or do what I've got to do as fast as I can to get to the finish, so that can do something that I do want to do, which is look after the animals. So exactly. that's kind of a methodology behind behind yeah. running. And um, people say, well, what's your proudest moment with running? Um, I think the proudest thing that I've ever done with my um, running is uh, back in two thousand and four. I was getting some good results and. Um, to run um, in the UK in certain races, you have to be in affiliated clubs that, you know, to, to England athletics. Mm. And um, I was running in the vegetarian cycling and athletics club because mm-hmm. it was the only club in existence that pertained, had any any kind of um, a connection with why I was running. Um, and one guy in there with me, Peter Simpson, said, um, 
you you're going to be on the start line next to Paul. <laughs>